So this is the tail of two teeth. On my left, we have a cheek tooth from a very young horse. And on my right, we have a cheek tooth from a very young horse. But if we look at them closely, there are some significant differences. So to help illustrate my point, I'm going to put them here. Take this pen. And I'm going to briefly trace the outlines, roughly, of these two teeth. Very very crudely and hopefully fairly quickly so that you can see. So there's tooth number one and then we come up and join the dots and tooth number two coming along like that and then get in there and join the dots. So when we take it away you should be able to see quite clearly the differences between the left and the right. If we look then at the ends of these teeth, this one is going to look something like this, while this one is going to look something like that. And if we look at the ends of the actual teeth by putting them back here and turning them up like that and up like that, you should be able to see that that is true. The one on the left has these large, open, well dilated apices or basically the roots that are not yet formed and this is the area where the blood vessels and the nerves enter into the young tooth. If we look at this one you can see you have one it's dark but you should better see you have one large apex and one very small apex. So if we then take this to represent the blood vessels and this to represent the nerves we quickly draw them in here, if this works, like that, like that, like that, and like that. So there's our blood vessels. Now our nerves, like that, like that, like that, and then down here in this one. So looking at that, can you see very clearly that in this area, here, we've got a significantly narrowed apex or root compared to the other three. And in fact, to keep this video short, we're going to move on and look at just this tooth now, which is a tooth from a very young horse. And again, on the left is our fairly normal root, although if you look closely you can see a fair bit of discoloration in the lower portion of the root, that grey area. And then on the right is our more abnormal root. You notice it's a lot smaller, narrower, and as we turn the tooth, hopefully you're going to see some other changes. Obvious one is going to be this fairly large deficit or hole, defect, whatever you want to refer to it as here. But actually, again, looking at these two roots, you should be able to see a very clear difference in their size. And their size and the diameter. And that partly looks at the fact of when development has gotten, or where development has gotten to in the two roots. So this tooth root here has has had its development interrupted and that has had an impact on these blood vessels and nerves as we see here and that pressure followed by infection has led to this change here which you can think of as a blowout like a blowout in a tire and if we quickly to keep this short just look at the tooth now side on you should see this very large swelling or thickening here which again thinking about it like a car tire when the car tire starts to become flat and the wall of the tire expands it's the same sort of thing we've got deformation of this tooth in other words there's pressure here as this tooth is forming and as the tooth can't go where it wants to go or not as quickly as it needs to that pressure causes these tissues to expand and that expansion is going to go wherever there's the least resistance in other words wherever it can expand the bone and the tooth can change shape and that's what we have here we have this bowing or buckling of these enamel plates we have this abscess that blows out here and we have early interruption to development of this tooth root. So looking at this tooth again, as we rotate it in three dimensions, you can see this very clear swelling or bowing here. You can see the difference in the two roots here. And you can see this large defect here. And just to finish up, we go back to this tooth here, which again is a young horse, similar age, less root development at this stage. You can see these nice straight grooves here.
And this is what I'm talking about in terms of buckling or bowing of these enamel plates. And the pressure being applied here, if there's something stopping the tooth here, instead of this maintaining these nice straight lines, we get this bending, buckling, bowing situation. If you compare the two side by side, should be a little clearer what I'm talking about. Okay.